I'd like to welcome you all for making the trip uh, to New York and, and to the Bronx. Uh, this is uh, the second, actually, Advancing Global Health um, Conference. Uh, those of you there at the first one, uh, that was right after Hurricane Sandy, so I think we have slightly better weather than we had last time. And uh, However, the facilities were up and running last time as well, and they were equally uh, good. Um, I want to thank uh, very much also uh, the um, Conference Center, uh, continuing, the Center for Continuing Medical Education for their contributions in, in organizing, uh, Nata uh, Piacentino and Marilyn uh, Sasso. And they've asked me to remind you that there are activity evaluations in the package, and if you would please fill them out and return them at the end. And again, that they would also be distributing certificates of attendance uh, or certificates for the meeting, and they'll be available at the end of the meeting preceding the reception. And I'd also like to thank uh, personally uh, Jill Rothman, who has been tireless in uh, leading and organizing um, this um, symposium and her job as manager of the Global Health Center. Well, my first order of business uh, here, and I'll be master of ceremonies at the beginning, is to introduce uh, Dr. Spiegel. Dr. Spiegel is currently the dean of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, has been serving for several years, and came from the NIH um, where he was head of um, diabetes, the Diabetes Center. Thanks very much, uh, Lou and uh, Jill, for uh, organizing and other colleagues for being here. Uh, I want to keep us on time, and I actually am eager to hear the plenary talk. At this you know, very peculiar time in the evolution of global medicine and public health issues, uh, I want to just put in a pitch for one of my own admitted biases, which is uh, something that may easily be lost track of in the Ebola crisis, which continues to dominate the news, has been shamelessly politicized as part of the election. Uh, and that is the importance of research, research of all kinds. I I'm in no way de-emphasizing the critical and heroic efforts of various public health leaders, the need to do all of the public health measures and, and compassionate care at risk to life that we see. But not just in Ebola, malaria, TB, HIV. Uh, I remember uh, at last time's version of this event having just come back from Durban, South Africa, where we had the dedication of the KwaZulu-Natal Research Institute for TB and HIV, our, our own Bill Jacobs up on the fifth floor of this building, uh, the anchor for the TB component. There are so many of these areas where the importance of fundamental research and translational research uh, is critical. I liken it to the issue of polio. Uh, if we had focused only on public health measures and state-of-the-art care, we'd be tweaking the dials on the iron lung as opposed to learning how to culture viruses in mammalian cells and having a polio vaccine. And so the work, the pioneering work of Cardiac Chandran, our microbiology department, showing for the first time the portal of entry of the Ebola virus using the neiman C type 1 protein, his colleague in biochemistry, part of a huge NIH-funded consortium on developing better neutralizing antibodies to Ebola. These are examples, also very robust point of care tests, which would reduce the need for transporting blood and give results very quickly. All these things would synergize with the unequivocal need uh, for a strong public health response. So with that in mind, I look forward to the talk, and thank you very much, Lou. Um, so I'd like to introduce um, next uh, Dr. Ann Kurth, who is Professor of Nursing Medicine and Public Health at New York University, Associate Dean for Research at NYU's Global Institute of Public Health and NYU's uh, Paulette Goddard Chair for Global Health. PhD is in Epidemiology, MSN in Nurse Midwifery from Yale, and an MPH from Columbia. Research on sexual and reproductive health and on global health system strengthening has been funded by NIH, Gates, UNAIDS, CDC, and others in the U.S. and internationally. Dr. Kurth has published over 110 peer-reviewed articles, chapters, and monographs. She's a member of the Institute of Medicine Committee on the PEPFAR evaluation. She's an elected member of the IOM, a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, and of the New York Academy of Medicine, secretary treasurer of the Consortium of Universities in Global Health, and a member of the 2014-2018 U.S. Preventative Services Task Force. And did I miss checker of the exchequer in there? 
It's a pleasure to be here, and I'll just take a very brief opportunity, and thank you so much to the organizers here at Einstein and Monty and to all of you as attendees, um, just to give a brief um, overview of the Consortium of Universities uh, for Global Health. If you're not aware of the organization, I think it's a, a resource, and I'll just uh, give you a quick thumbnail as we move forward to our wonderful uh, program for the day. So CUGH was, came out of a, a consortium from, um, to put together the power of universities um, to approach global health partnerships around the world and address disparities everywhere. It is a dues-paying membership organization. The uh, dues are at the institution level. And each of you who are a member of your university, you can check the website to see if you're a member, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if your university is a member or not. Um, and we did get initial funding uh, with Gates Foundation and Rockefeller Foundation support and was a merger with um, really the global health um, G GHEC group originally. So this just gives you sort of the chronology of the organization. It really formed, again, directly out of this, born out of a university-based uh, global health uh, leadership. Several meetings were held. Um, and then our first conference was held in 2009 at NIH. We've had conferences moving forward ever since, every year since then. As you can see, the numbers have grown. And we're looking forward to a fantastic conference coming up here in 2015. So it is a, a very good meeting. And the goal and our mission really is about building those interprofessional, cross-disciplinary collaborations, partnerships, north, south, 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 um, south, north, around the world, again, to focus on reducing disparities and improve equity. So what do we do for you as a member, as a university member? We uh, engage in advocacy. If, for example, I can tell you we met just two weeks ago at Deborah Burks at OGAC to talk about MEPI and NEPI and the, uh, the value proposition of MEPI and NEPI in terms of US uh, university engagement with that. So we do engage in advocacy, capacity building, education. We have over 110 modules that came over from the GHEC um, uh, work and are, have been updated, so clinical and training modules. We do workshops on enabling systems. Those of you who are engaged in work around the world, you know that it's not always easy to do the administrative and research and sort of operational piece of doing global health partnerships. So we provide some of the tools around that. And we're a communication and dissemination forum. Again, we have events and certainly our, uh, our annual conference is one of those. Our membership, we're, up to, uh, we're growing uh, close to 100 university members now, and we are getting more international uh, universities outside of North America. And there are benefits, I would argue, to your university being a member and staying uh, a member, as you see here. We do try to connect and bring together those partnerships um, across uh, the disciplines, and not just within the health sciences. And we do have an updated website that is a resource that you can certainly feel free to turn to. So again, I'll just put a placeholder there. Um, please join us at the upcoming uh, Boston meeting. It's shaping up to be a terrific meeting, March 26th through 28th. Abstract submissions are, are uh, still, um, uh, late breakers can be accepted. And those of you who are considering, considering board, <laughs> running for the board, we are accepting nominations until the 17th of this month. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.